learn to be a proper human being playing the game of cricket. It's a test of your skill, it's a test of your courage, and it's a test of your intelligence. As far as I was concerned, a test match was perfectly known. It was a test. You'll never take away oh, test cricket. Delicious. Just think about it, Cam. What's he going through? This is Ed's dream come true. It's one of his dreams ever since the day he was born, I think. Awesome. I was like, this can't be happening. This is an absolute nightmare. The old ways don't work anymore. You've got to change. I fear for the importance and the relevance of Test Cricket. 2020 Cricket has pushed the world game to prioritising money over perhaps everything else. It's not about cricket, it's about life. It would be a video interview. We've been investigating this film for two years. We just want to ask one question. This is just exactly how cricket runs. Threat and intimidation. How many sports in the world are actually contracting? It exists mainly for the interests of broadcasters, corporate investors, entrepreneurial administrators. What we're talking about is businessmen and the fan willing to do absolutely anything is there to be monetized, to keep hold of unpaid positions and to be exploited. It's basically three or four people. A billion people have a reason to feel cheated. He knows where the bodies are buried. We have no interest to hurt cricket in any way. Well, that's very kind, Mr. Srinivasan. Ultimately, cricket wins. Why are these men so desperate for this power? It's a power grab and a money grab. And that's what all it is. I have done nothing wrong. What are they getting out of it that we're not understanding? Next question. So we started making the film. We're journalists working in cricket. You very quickly realise that there's a hell of a lot wrong with cricket. We had fantastic access and time on our hands. So we started making a film about it. Initially, I suppose, to see what the future was for Test Cricket, you very quickly realise that everything, that's all the problems in cricket of which the future of Test Cricket is one of them, come back to the way the game's run, uh, and that the way cricket is run is, is a system that uh, basically encourages, um, well, it is ripe for manipulation, um, and I suppose that what we've seen in, in India with the Supreme Court is, is, a, is an example of how individuals are, are perhaps using the game for their own interests rather than the greater interests of the game, which is causing all the problems. We can't fix any of that until we fix the governance. It's a long answer. I don't know. I'll add something to that. No, I think, I mean, I mean, essentially we, we thought we should make a film about cricket, we thought we owed it to cricket, we, we were travelling around the world, um, and we wanted to look into something that was important. We thought the biggest question everyone was asking was about the death of Test Cricket, so we started there, and quite quickly it was clear to us that, that, wasn't, that wasn't the biggest issue in cricket. The biggest issue in cricket was why was it being run, how is it being run, and were particular people running it for their own amusement. And that was where we ended up with, so we ended up chasing that, and then obviously we were, there's a, there's a whole, there was a whole period of time where we knew everything in one way or another, but there was no way we could put it on the screen. And then uh, we were lucky, uh, eventually the Supreme Court in India started um, outing them, and obviously Guru Mayap and um, coming, being caught match fixing at Chennai, and all those sorts of things suddenly helped us out massively. This is the question we're asked probably the most because of what our film is about. And I think you have to distinguish a little bit between the fact that test cricket is being played at a level, and I would take almost from the 80s onwards, that it's never been played before. More countries are playing it, they're playing it in a different way. I think the golden era of cricket probably was from the late 70s through the late 90s until match fixing, but even the golden era of test cricket, the test maybe even got better after that. But that doesn't mean that um, Sri Lanka are getting the same amount of tests as England are. That Sri Lanka and the West Indies cancelled a, a, a test series um, and that there isn't major political things. And when you've got the West Indies players basically for the first time in their history saying we would prefer to play for a franchise system than our own country because our own country won't pay us or treat us well that's the problem that we're looking at we're not worried about whether there are close tests or you know the other details we're worried about the very existence of the game itself and whether it's trying to grow and it, I don't think it is yeah, it's like a it's like saying that you know climate change isn't happening because you've had a nice day of weather you know and, and the biggest issue for cricket is the fact that there's nothing in place to deal with the huge financial imbalances in the game at, at the moment what's happened over the last 20 years the period that Jared just mapped out is that so much satellite television money has dropped into the game it's it's totally skewed the incentives for cricketers you know what 
there is no incentive for anyone apart from the big three nations to play test cricket at the moment. And even for the big three nations, their players earn so much more money playing 2020 that there's going to come a point if this isn't checked, whether it's the IPL expanding or whether it's Sebastian Chandra coming in and offering players five times what they already get owed, where test cricket is going to be priced out of the market. If you don't have proper governance, that's what's going to happen. Well, just attendance is the yeah, greatest just, question because it means nothing in world, in world cricket anymore. Less than, I think it's less than 8% of cricket's total revenue comes from in, a, attendance. It's probably far less than that realistically if we had the proper numbers. Essentially, outside of England um, and Australia slightly, attendance just doesn't affect the bottom line. You could have no one in the grounds and it just doesn't change anything. And, and the truth is that if there's a big test match, you know, you can have hundreds of millions of people watching it on TV. That is where cricket's future is. And I mean, the, the bigger point is that Test Cricket, One Day Cricket and 2020 Cricket are all proven to be excellent games that people will watch if you market them properly. Attendances themselves are irrelevant. The issue is, as you say, it's about television. It's about how much money you can make from television, which comes back to advertising, you know, which is all about focus. So obviously the more focused your, your, your slot is, the more advertising money you're, you're supposedly going to make out of it. The issue is, how do you, you deal with the fact that test cricket is at a huge disadvantage financially compared to those shorter formats? And if you don't have people at the top, sympathetically understanding, enhancing, remarketing, finding different ways to promote test cricket, give it context, then it's not going to be able to stand up to that challenge. And that's the most amazing thing for us, especially early on before the politics came in, is that you have, uh, TV executives love test cricket because you're saying, here's five days of sport, you've got so many ads that you can fit into that, you've got a narrative that's going to keep drawing people back to the TV, there's so many reasons for people to watch test cricket on TV, it's a perfect sport for them, but when was the last time or any time in the history of the game it's been advertised the way that T20 is advertised? They push T20 like crazy, for all of its success, they have marketed it and pushed it so amazingly and test cricket just stays there and they go it's a bit hard we don't know what to do with it well well here's something for you it could make a fortune because it goes for longer than one day or t20 and just as many people watch it in most countries on, on earth so it doesn't make any sense that it should make less money but they're allowing it to do that and part of the reason is it's easier to work with t20 than it is with test cricket and they've just thrown their hands up but all, all of those things these are just normal no, cricket wait, you stuff. are you're you're wrong they are marketing test cricket, but they're marketing test cricket between England, India and Australia. Even then I don't think that's, they market it. But, you know, <laughs> but I mean, that's, that, that's where their only focus is. See, that's where the game is, is that it, it is casting aside the smaller seven countries. It's casting aside the other 95 countries that play cricket because they're not interested in them because they don't have a television market. What are the st what's the stat about India's population? Is it something approaching 70% of India's population are under 30? Yeah. So what you're doing, what the, the IPL is perfectly constructed. You know, everything in everything is so so transient. You know, you start going out with a this is a really tenuous metaphor, but you start going out with a girl, and a month later it can feel like you've known them forever. You know, that's what it can be like with they, they've they created the IPL so perfectly to fill a void that I don't think. I don't have a problem with, with that aspect of the IPL. I can't, I'm not going to sit here and say the IPL is bad. The IPL is, you know, one of the wonderful aspects of cricket. It's one that we went to and it was one of the most incredible things that you can see. The, the issue is that what the IPL is being allowed to do is exacerbate faults that already existed within cricket rather than complement cricket's calendar and improve it and provide a wonderful thing for cricketers to be involved in. It's actually pulling the game apart. It's skewing the incentives. But Giles Clark, Wally Edwards, Srinivas, and these are all men who really do like Test Cricket. I, I truly believe that. But that's not what cricket is really run for. I mean, they're not, they're not trying to, uh, they're not, their decisions are not about Test Cricket or One Day Cricket or even T20 Cricket. Their decisions are about individual power, about their boards, about their teams being better. That's what they're, they're about ultimately their legacy, doing. About their legacy. Yeah. Short-termism. Giles Clark, I'm not going to say this because it's litigious. <laughs> but there is absolutely no doubt that they are they are looking after themselves more than anything else. Now, but the fact that they're Test cricket fans, it, it doesn't that doesn't seem to matter. Giles Clark will say that the game's never been in better health. At the same time, uh, 
less people are watching this Ashes series than watch most Ashes well, series. There's clearly is down. Down. Yeah. yeah, and the participation of people playing cricket across the UK is down. So they can they can love it and they can talk up the game and say how marvelous cricket is. Their decisions that they're making on a sm on a local level, on an international level, are not actually helping test cricket they're not actually helping cricket as a whole that's all that matters it doesn't matter what they love or what their personalities are like well, and what you have they, they, these these three men Giles Clark Wally Edwards and Entry Navassan have left cricket have put cricket in a horrible situation we see what's happening with FIFA we see see the fact that you know any sport is only as clean as the people who play it or the people who run it what governance what governance systems exist to do is to put some safeguards against manipulation. The way that cricket is run at the moment has become hugely valuable. We were talking about $1.9 billion is cricket's latest um, broadcast deal for the ICC for the next eight year period. That, that, the decisions about what happens to that money, where it goes, is all made by three people essentially. Influenced by three people. We as the public have no idea why those decisions are being made, what those decisions are. There's no transparency, there's no accountability. The three men who are sitting, three of the five men in that executive committee making that decision, one of them is N. Srinivasan, who's been directly investigated to, you know, directly linked to match fixing through his son in law with Chennai Super Kings. One of them is Giles Clark. Who brought, and, uh, who brought Alan Stanford to Lords in a helicopter. These are, these are fallible individuals. You know, no, the second biggest sport in the world, something that's loved by a billion people, should not, be, should not be reduced to relying on the word of those individuals. It should have proper governance. What, what, we've, what we've seen is that this is, the ICC is essentially being run as a private members club for its three richest nations. The three countries who already have the biggest television markets, who already make the most money from playing themselves every year. What they've done is they've, essentially this has been dressed up as India wanting a, a larger part of the ICC revenue pot. So what's happened is now 52% of ICC revenues goes to cricket's three richest countries. The percentage revenue for the associate nations and the affiliates has dropped from 25 to 9%. Um, the, it's the other seven test playing nations, despite the fact that cricket has earned 800 million extra dollars um, through the television contract, their, the amount of money they receive has gone up by less than the rate of inflation in this, I'm incorrect. Um, the next eight years, every single major global event will happen in England, India and Australia. So what they've done is they've, they've, they've bumped up the television money by, by basically concentrating all the events in the television markets that get, will gain the, the most money and then they are taking the larger percentage of those revenues. So what you also then have is every, all the money that goes out to the smaller test playing nations, there's absolutely no accountability. Those guys don't need to produce accounts. So that money, we can't tell where that money is being spent. We can't tell how it's being spent. There's, you know, we had a situation last year, what was it, that Peter Jingoka was caught using ICC funds to prop up a bank he was the chief executive of, that's Zimbabwe cricket, um, Sri Lanka cricket. There's huge problems uh, there. I don't want to generalize, but what we're saying is that, that if we can't tell, if we don't know, the game doesn't know where this money is going and bear in mind this money all comes from us the fans watching the game on television if we don't know where that money's going there's no way that you know cricket can actually solve any of its problems and you know there's a basic level of corruption when the person who's running the game at the very top of the game uh, and is not being paid to do so but has a, a private stake in the actual running of the game so every decision that the ICC make that actually helps the IPL um, get a stronger foothold in cricket helps Mr. Srinivasan. So he's essentially making decisions ba based on the fact that it, what can and cannot help the Chennai Super Kings. Now he, he's been forced out of the BCCI because of this, you know, uh, conflict of interest, and yet he's still running the bigger job, which is the ICC in general. So you and know, heading it's up a, the anti-corruption unit. Uh, yeah, and so it's a, it's it's quite clear. You know, it's not like FIFA. We don't need the FBI to come in and show us that there's something wrong. It's there. It's in front of us. All we're doing is basically mapping it out in front of everyone and saying how can this possibly go on clearly clearly Srinivasan has a conflict in his position uh, between test cricket and the IPL but there's also a huge conflict with these guys in the fact that they are they sit on the ICC board to represent their country's interests but also to represent the interests of global cricket we've seen with decisions like the Olympics which has been vetoed because England don't want to give up two weeks of their season every four years that these guys are not capable of putting the best interests of cricket ahead of their own countries Lord Wolf the former Lord Chief Justice of the UK wrote a report into the game in 2012 commissioned by Harun Lorgat 
where he said that cricket needed independent governance to deal with this issue you need, and bring in transparency, accountability, guys to make decisions for all of us, the best interests of the game. That, dis that, that uh, report was turned down inside, what was it, a week, sure. 10 days, by Srinivasan and Clark with absolutely no comeback from anyone, from the media, from anyone. It was just allowed. And that's the worst thing about this. This has all happened. There is a blueprint out there for how cricket can change, written by credible people who understand governance. And there, there is a way ahead, but this has all happened in plain sight. The Wolf Report, the hijacking of the game two years later, it's happened in front of our eyes, and no one's done anything about it, and that's what we're trying to change. All of this is inevitable. If you don't root, sort out the root problem, which is poor governance, and you know people in positions of authority with huge conflicts of interest, then of course you're going to get these decisions. Why has the BCCI taken such a long time to deal with that? This is a 2013 case that was, was sorted out with the Lodi Commission. Of course, because the people at the top making the decisions in the BCCI are conflicted, they're involved. I mean, by, base, the basic, named in yeah, by the basic rules of the IPL, if you're, if you're, for people who own and run your team are involved in match fixing, you have to be expelled from the competition. But the person who ran the BCCI owns one of the teams. That's obviously never going to happen in that situation. This is the, the problem with cricket right there. It's that the people who should be making the best decisions are making the decisions about themselves. There's no way to get rid of Srinivasan because he's in every part of the game. And I'm not saying he's a bad person. I mean, w whatever person he is, I don't care. This isn't personal. This is, is about it? the way that the game is run. He cannot make the best decisions because he can't fire his own franchise. You know, that is why the, the Supreme Court got involved. And yet the ICC are still being run by this man. It, it just, it doesn't make any sense. That, that's the weird thing. We, we put up the trailer on Reddit and there are all these people going, ah, every, everything's Srinivasan's fault. Quite clearly, just from the trailer, Giles Clark is just as implicated in all this. Wally Edwards isn't even in the film. He refused to be interviewed for the film. This is three cricket boards. Only one of them happens to be from Asia. You know, and if you, if you want me to go through it, I can go through and tell you problems that every single cricket board, no matter where they come from, has problems with. This is, the game is not run well in any country that I have seen. The first independent cricket board we saw was in Ireland. And and that was in 2007 and look at what Ireland cricket has managed to do with no money just by think, think, trying to grow the game. Imagine if we took what Ireland were doing and did it globally. The whole cricket world could get bit bigger. We could make more money, which is what some of these guys want, and we could actually help the entire planet. Instead, three countries. I think it's inevitable. You know, why cricket is run shambolically. There are very few, even most test series don't have context for themselves. No one knows why most cricket's being played, where it's being played, apart from, you know, the only thing we know is that it's being played to generate money. Now, uh, you know, the, the paradox is that actually if cricket were to be run by a, a Chandra figure or a Bernie Eccleston figure or something like that, there's a possibility that it would actually be a better product for the fans. I use that word, product while knifing myself silently in the heart. <laughs> but there is, there is a possibility that, you know, that this is a game which has got a huge, huge following around the world. It generates huge television money. So it is going to be of interest to people like Sebastian Chandra. Sport drives people to watch television. And if you do, again, if you do not have proper governance in place, then you will not have any hope of stopping players from going and playing in that, that sort of tournament. I mean, you only have to look at the fact that cricket is so far behind and it hasn't really maximized the fact that uh, Crick Info, second biggest market is the US. Uh, if you had a proper streaming service where all cricket games could, you could pay for a subscription like MLB TV, like NBA TV, and these sorts of things, you could make so much more money. If you're Chandran, or you know, it could be Elon Musk, the South African billionaire. There's so many cricket guys out there with billions of dollars that could easily go to a TV station and make money. This, help yeah. us fund this. Elon Musk is a cricket guy. Well, he's South African. I'm just putting that together. Um, but but there are so many there are so many people out there with billions of dollars who could bring this together, and they would instantly because if it was all under one hat they would make so much more money than what cricket is because ICC hasn't been allowed to be to run the entire game so when when, when Sam says it's a 1.9 billion dollar game he's talking about ICC revenue yeah. that doesn't include English revenue Australian revenue it doesn't include IPL revenue or Indian TV we're talking about six to seven billion dollars right w w imagine 
at one billionaire can bring all that together. You get one really good TV company in India, you get one really good streaming service, and suddenly you're making more than that straight away, and you can buy every top level cricketer in yeah, the world yeah. and pay them more than they currently get, and you will make money, more money off advertising. It, it's right there. I hate to, you know, give this blueprint out to it, but it, but it is, it's just obvious. The yeah. history of sport, players go to where the money is. Par you know, paraphrasing Tim May there, <laughs> the great man. But it's just, it's gonna happen. It's going to happen at some some stage. It's just a question of when, yeah. and whether it's the IPL that it grows itself, or whether it's Chandra, or someone else again. Yeah. You know, kids nowadays, they just want things which are over in a second. They hate computer games. Long form hate, journalism. Yeah. I mean, everything, know, everything. It's just there. It's just needs to be propagated, you know, when, it just needs to be publicised. Yeah, when Test Cricket came along, people. they said in England, three day, uh, five, five days was too long, we'd make it three days because no one could handle it in the 1800s being five days long. I think Test Cricket has now proved that that's just nonsense. Golf is, uh, I, I mean, imagine golf suddenly saying to themselves, geez, do you know what, if we just bring back a day, yeah. it would never do that. It, we, it doesn't, that doesn't need to happen. What needs to happen is a lot of different decisions that be changed, but people will fall in love with Test Cricket because Test Cricket is amazing. It doesn't matter if it's there's a difference between the Kardashians and West Wing for instance but the West Wing still made a lot of money it's still being repeated and will be watched for years to come the Kardashians makes a fortune of money but in 10 years time no one will remember it that, that doesn't mean that both things don't exist and that both things can't be loved by different kinds of people Test Cricket and T20 are very similar in that way so why, why do we why do we sit here and go oh, it, it, the world the world has got quicker the world is always going to get quicker that doesn't mean that people don't want to slow down in novels haven't world, gone away in, you know in this time that things are getting quicker like as opposed to that time when they were yeah. you know, I mean, it's a uh, reason why Test Cricket will fade in relevance is if there are not enough competitive teams playing it the the the, the job of the administration of the game is to grow this sport, to get as many competitive teams playing as possible, so that in the time of our children and our grandchildren, maybe, you know, in the time of our grandparents, there were how many teams playing Test cricket? Five, was it? And for like our that? grandparents? Yeah. yeah, it was six in 1930, wasn't it? Now there are 10. You know, let's hope that in the time of our grandchildren, there are 15, there are 20. That is the job of the administration. And the biggest... E that no, that is not happening in this, that's not happening at the moment. The, <laughs> The funding to the associate and the affiliate nations is being cut. Their opportunities to participate in global events is being cut. Um, their, their actual qualification for Test cricket is virtually set up so that they can't come in. They're competing against teams that make hundreds of millions of dollars, and they're making you know chicken feed on the side. And then they're saying you have to beat them at home and away. I mean, they're setting it up. And even now, if a Test team does come in, so if the 11th team comes in, they're not going to get a vote on um, ICC matters. So they're just even they're, they're still strangling it. Even if Ireland or Afghanistan manage to go because through. Don't want to give a bigger part of the pie, do they? There's a mm. full member pie, but the but the issue is FIFA. For all the ill that FIFA is doing to the game, FIFA is growing football. The World Cup is 32 teams, potentially going up to 64. Rugby is increasing its World Cup. Cricket is shrinking. You know, if ever you need to say, how do we know that cricket's in trouble? The game is shrinking. You know, the World Cup is going down from 14 teams to 10. Look at the, you know, the West Indies have barely, you know, barely got any players left because they're all off playing in 2020 tournaments. Um, well, I mean, we're, we're literally in a situation now where we have a person with a conflict of interest, with a son-in-law who's involved in fixing, with a team that's about to be thrown out by the Supreme Court of India running our game, and he's great, and Afghanistan, which is the best story that's happened to cricket in maybe 100 years, coming through to play, and we're saying we don't want them. We want Srinivasan, we don't want Afghanistan. That is where cricket is today but we are starting a campaign to change the way the game is run. And what we are saying is that we as fans and the media who are involved, who, who, whose responsibility it is to draw attention to this sort of stuff, because otherwise why the hell are we in our jobs anyway, we should not stand for the way the game's being run. We need to draw, uh, we need to draw attention to the way that cricket's being run. We need to try and change things. We can't say that FIFA's a problem and not say that this is a problem. And that doesn't, you know, if it may be that our national boards, whether it's India, whether it's England, whether it's Australia, are involved in this, but we need to hold these guys to account. We need to change the way that cricket's run and we need to give the game the best chance possible for surviving into the future. Personally, I don't care. As long as I've got cricket to watch on television, I'll be happy. Yeah, I mean, I've, I've you know, 
I, I suppose I'm more in, in cricket at the moment than Sam is because he, he took a back seat when he was doing the film. Um, look, there's already been some blowback. It's not a big deal. I'm just going to keep doing what I do. I, I have said to the odd administrator that if it, my accreditation is ever taken away, that's fine. I won't write about cricket anymore. I'll just write about cricket administration full time. And, you know, I'm sure I will get enough work doing that. So it, it's not going to be a problem for me. The game, they can't make me fall out of love with the game and they can't stop me from watching it on, on my TV or going to the ground. And that's all that really matters.